however long the storm lasts, MOM will walk this journey with you. However tough it may be, we will help you bounce back. I would like to clarify if Minister Teo believes that simply slowing down the rate of EP and S pass holders is sufficient uh, to ensure that local PMETs do not get displaced. I say this in part because uh, this strategy, while it's a very blunt strategy, uh, and for starters, uh, we, we need to take into account base effects. So let me explain. Even if the rate of issuance has slowed, as Minister Teo has shared, it's misleading to actually compare the two. Uh, so for instance, a 20% increase from 50 people, for example, uh, is 10 people, but a 10% increase from 200 people is in fact uh, an increase of 20 people, which is larger in absolute terms. Now I understand that 35,000 people is larger than 9,000, but the point is that the slowdown uh, in the rate of EP and S pass issuance is less dramatic than Minister Teo claims. Uh, moreover, we should be aware that um, of the effect of diminishing returns, by which I mean many PMETs uh, may already have secured foreign, foreign talent, uh, and many PMET positions may already have been secured by foreign talent. And so it's no surprise that the number that is now required actually goes down. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I merely stated the facts. I did not say that one contributed. I did not say that one contributed to the other. I stated the facts. This is what they were. The facts are what they are. But I thought that I should perhaps address Dr. James Lim's other question. Are we satisfied with slowing down the rate of growth of EP and S pass holders? If we can reduce the reliance on unproductive manpower intensive methods of work in some of our business sectors today, if we can groom more Singaporeans to take up the good jobs that we are creating, then of course the answer is yes. But we have to ask ourselves, looking at the opportunities as well as the constraints we have as a tiny city-state, which Mr. Leong Man Wai reminds us, we are a tiny city-state, we are not a tiny city. And a tiny city-state has got its opportunities, but it also has its constraints. I'd like to ask a clarification from Professor James Lim. Uh, he made the point about uh, EPs and SP and the numbers not, um, you know, not telling up. What is his uh, recommendation and what is his proposal in terms of the approach or the numbers that we should take? Thank you. If, if I may clarify, Mr. Speaker, I wasn't suggesting that uh, the numbers were incorrect, so I should be clear. Uh, what I was suggesting is that when we think about decreasing uh, the rate of EP and S pass holders, and we simply think about applying it as a blunt instrument uh, by saying that just because reducing it is sufficient, uh, that in itself is misleading, uh, and, and I think this was something that Minister Teo clarified, that ultimately we don't want to look for a single number in which we can reduce uh, EP or S pass holders. What we want ultimately is the ability to think more flexibly about how we approach uh, PMET issues and displacement, potential displacement uh, by the foreign workforce. What, what is your approach then? Because um, if we do, are you suggesting that we stop the number of EPs completely or S passes? What would the implications of that be? The numbers re were reduced to almost zero uh, this year. But of course, we all know that the reason why they were reduced to almost zero was because unemployment rates shot up. So it's unsurprising, of course, that uh, the number of EP and S pass holders uh, fell dramatically. So we shouldn't be looking at pure numbers in order to make our conclusions about whether PMETs are being displaced or not. Okay, the more important question is can we have a tea break?